Hey gamers, Rick here for Game Trade Media. We're at Gamma Trade Show in Reno, Nevada, and I've got Dave from Solar Flare Games with us. Hey, Rick, Dave, how's it going? Going well. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I'm glad you guys had me. So, before we get into the awesome Robotech <laughs> in front of us, uh, tell us a little bit about Solar Flare Games. Uh, Solar Flare Games, uh, I started it about five and a half years ago. Um, I did it as a way to kind of connect to my stepkids because everybody had their cell phone and it was this all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, you know, board games are popular. Maybe I can convince the kids. Mm -hmm. No, it became a business, and kids never had any interest in it. So, <laughs> But our the goal of the company has always been um, family-friendly games, mm -hmm. so stuff that plays in under an hour. Sure. Um, doesn't have, you know, we make sure that women, uh, male and females, are equally represented. Like, you've seen our Lords of Rock game. Mm -hmm. You know, half the gods are male, half the gods are female, right. because having – helped raise a bunch of stepdaughters is you're, you're very cognizant of the society and how it treats people. And mm -hmm. so solar flare has always been about inclusion, mm -hmm. you know, everybody coming together, having a good time. Um, you know, we, we, we says put your, put your phone down and connect with each other analogly, you know, in an analog sure. manner. And that's what we've always been about. And uh, yeah, we're here talking about that. Five and a half years later, this is our 10th game. Nice. So yeah, that's <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah. This is, so we, a lot of our viewers already know you for the Robotech line mm -hmm. too, um, and I want to ask before we again before we get into <laughs> this, where did your love and passion for Robotech come from? Um, uh, 1985. Mm -hmm. I was 14. Well, I just dated myself. Oops. Yep. Um, and I discovered that there's this cartoon coming on. I'm like, I've never seen anything like this because I mean, you're you and I are kind of a similar generation, yeah. and like it was all Scooby Doo and. Mm -hmm you know, Hanna-Barbera, and right. suddenly we have transforming airplanes and s battle fortresses that, you know, blast aliens out of the sky. And, and one of the things that's funny has come to me recently, I rewatched it, like, mm. it's really violent. Yeah. You know, it's, it's very <laughs> real. It's very real, but right. it's very, you know, in a way that G.I. Like Joe, everybody ejected, right? Mm -hmm. You go, here, you watch people get vaporized. And you're, but it was, it was new. I mean, it was so cutting edge at the time. And to me, in a lot of ways, it was the gateway for the rest of the anime that came after. There's sure. a lot of people that would argue otherwise. Sure. But I, you know, I discovered that, and I discovered Star Blazers and mm -hmm. Silverhawks. And, right. you know, and then it spouted out in the Jason the Wheeled Warriors and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff that kind of came after where the, it, we, the kids of our generation suddenly demanded more mm -hmm. of our animation than what we were getting. Right. And... I felt, and this is going to be a silly story, is when I watched the show, I was 14 going on 15, and everybody liked either Midmay or Lisa. And what I liked about the show is, like, Lisa and the triplets were always, and Claudia were strong. They were leaders. I mean, the whole command deck of the mm -hmm. ship, except the captain, were strong command officer women. And so that was really cool. And so that yeah. was, that, I, that always liked that. And I, I loved Lisa. Lisa was the one I always yeah. thought was the coolest. And, right. and so I got, it, it's something that's part of me. You know, it, it drove a whole bunch of things in my life just because sure. of the, the message and the story that it right. had. And that's kind of how I got hooked okay. on it. Okay. I yeah. can dig that. Yeah. So now let's talk about Ro uh, Robotech's crisis point. So one of the things we did when we acquired the IP is we, I'll give you a little backstory. We decided we wanted to create three games with the Robotech IP, and then we would see where we'd go after that. And what we really wanted was something that made you feel like if you sat down one evening and mm -hmm. spent two and a half, three hours, maybe three and a half now, you'd play the show. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of companies sometimes will get an IP and you slap it on something that already exists. We built the games mm -hmm. for the IPs because okay. it, it was this passion. So what I want is when you play Force of Arms, you feel like, hey, I am commanding the RDF. And when you play this one, I am the Army of the Southern Cross and the evil Matt Robotech Masters are on the other side. Right. And then when you do the last one, Invid Invasion, which is coming later this year, mm -hmm. that's a full co-op. And you get to play Scott and Rook and Rand, and you get nice. little standees of them, and you're actually trying to fight the Invid off mm -hmm. as a team, just like you were in the show. Nice. And so Crisis Point is the middle, middle stepchild, so to speak, because mm -hmm. it's people either love it or they hate it. Okay. And it, it's, uh, it has to do some of the characters and kind sure. of the way it was, was, was stitched together. But uh, Crisis Point is what we call the ultimate expression of our utter Nightmare Force Utter Terror mechanic, which is that grid-based vector mm -hmm. power system. We started with Utter Terror, then we did Archmage Origins, and then we did Force of Arms. This is a final, this is a very good, long-thinking strategy game. If you just play it in the right now, you're going to get beat because there's, thing, there's stages in the game that you're trying to make sure you have configurations out here that mm -hmm. optimize your later plays. So it is not just a simple two-player war game. It's It's... Thinky strategy. 
Um, and that's what we wanted is, is Force of Arms was the entry point. Anybody right. can play it. It's, you learn it in five minutes. This takes about seven, eight minutes to learn. Okay. And this one will take forever to master because it's so – it changes so often sure. when you play it. So what are, um, based on the cards you have our, in front of us mm -hmm. here, what are, I see that you have uh, the purple – Yes. And then the gold. What are, what are these two? Different? So the, the purple is the Robotech Masters. So the back okay. of their, their cards are, each t card type is labeled, I'll hold it this way, and the team logo is on the back. So they're easy to sort, and they're mm -hmm. easy to break down into these stacks like I did here because this chunk here is used, uh, the, the, the combat mm -hmm. units and base are used during phase one. Okay. Then you have another phase where you use the hero and command cards. So okay. you, you don't want, I don't want to have people have 30 cards in their hand to try to play. So we, we tried to, Simplify it so that w quick sort from the back, you can just you can mm -hmm. and split them into piles just like I did. It took right. me 30 seconds, and then you give everybody their stuff and play. Okay. The way the game is built is you have what we call the battlefield, which is the four by four space out here mm -hmm. in the middle, and then you have the combat zone, which is the outside. And so when we were if we were playing, you'd be sitting on that side, right. and you would control this side and this side, and I would control this side and this side. And what you're doing is, as you play the combat cards face down around the outside, each combat card has a, a power. Mm -hmm. And you, when you look at a space, say we were looking at this space, if it was me, we'd look at my combat card here and my combat card here to see how much power meets here compared to how much power of yours meets here. Okay. And that's the goal, is you're trying to get things play, played out in a way, and it's way more, <laughs> it gets way sophisticated. Oh, of course, I can but, tell. But you're, you're playing them out here and you're filling it in, and when you're playing your combat cards around the outside, which are which are they're just like the with the, the Zentra with the masters here, it's just their cards number two through nine. So each mm -hmm. side's symmetrical. It's the rest of it that gets asymmetrical really okay. fast. But we wanted everybody knew what everybody could possibly play around the outside. Right. So each one is different. We had all new art created to uh, re replicate the Bioroids, which is the the choice of you know uh, the the combat clones mm -hmm. for the masters and so each of these is different so we, we really wanted to make sure it felt like okay um if i'm deploying a seven point combat card i can look at it in my hand and say okay it's the three guys on the sled versus one guy on a sled or the green guy in the sled you know we right. we really did that so you have a base you have earth command versus a crash city ship city ship wow that was good um <laughs> And then you have your combat cards. So, and then the, the Army of the Southern Cross has all the different versions of the hover tank because okay. the hover tank was the end all be all. Right. Uh, we recreated all of those. And when you play you, on your turn, you'll play one of your unit cards. So those are another separate eight cards, mm -hmm. which are all different. They all have a different power number. And this is when you play them in the center, how many combat tokens you collect to get to play later. Oh, okay. So you can manipulate the board more later with tokens. Okay. So instead of being where on the on the combat cards, it's vector power. This is you basically get tokens to drop on the board. All but right. each Just one boosting the power of defense of the, of the card that's there against the power Correct. Of the okay. So let, let's say um, let me find one here. Let's say I had a this unit was out here mm -hmm. and I'm the army of the Southern Cross and I drop a token on it. Whatever my power is mm -hmm. is now plus one right and if you have it you add a token on it to counter it defense. now your defense is plus one right so it's very we we used to have in force of arms we had attack and defense okay we wanted to simplify the outside to ramp up the center right um so for like so in each one of these unit cards during the course of play you're going to play eight cards you have to play one of your bases two strategic locations but only five of your eight units right so every time you play you're finding synergies that are different because okay. You play a card, the other guy plays a card, and there are certain cards that are better if you get them next to each other and then get to play the hero, right hero. You know, you okay. really get to propagate. Okay. But if you know what you're doing, you're going to go, well, I'm going to put next to him to keep him from getting bi too many biroids sure. together. And that's what we wanted was a lot of think three steps ahead. Mm -hmm. And so each one of these has a different power. They have a different victory point amount, and they have a different ability at the bottom that triggers. So okay. it, you have to... At times, you're like, okay, if I play this one, I'm going to get five tokens, but this is a weaker power. Do I want to play one of the, the ones that gives me less tokens, but mm -hmm. it can do something more dynamic for me on the board? That's choice, choice, cho meaningful choices out the wazoo. Okay. And so what would go happen is you'd play eight cards. Like mm -hmm. I said, it's one base, two strategic locations. D strategic locations aren't owned by anybody, but you have to play two. Sure. And they have victory point, t and they have a token trigger that they do. Mm -hmm. But we would go until... There was one card on each of the outside for each of us face down, mm -hmm. and there would be 16 cards in the middle face up. And we, we would have earned tokens as we went. As you play your card, if you earn any tokens, you always have to play one. So I play it. I earn some tokens. I have to leave one on the board because we wanted to speed up the token face a little bit. Of course. At one point, 
each of us having to play 50 tokens was a little much. Sure. So we kind of thinned it down. So as you play, you have to use one. Okay. And then when you get to the token phase, whatever we've earned, we play two at a time. Mm-hmm. And what you'll find is there tends to be an arms race happens. Like mm-hmm. if I put two on your base, then you're like, no, I'll put two on my base. Right. It, it, you're, you're always trying to guess what the other person says. So there's a lot of bluffing, resource management, mm-hmm. area control. I mean, we took every kind of little bit of a mechanic we could and went... This is and here, packaged, it it packaged together. All right. And so once the token phase is over, you'll have exhausted all your tokens. Then you have four heroes. And so f- we'll look at the, the, the Army of Southern Cross because they're the most famous. So you have Murray, Nova, which everybody loves Nova, Dana, and uh, Rolf Emerson. Each of them has a special ability. During the to- After the token phase is over, we'll go one at a time. Each of us plays one card. You get to play two of your heroes and two of your commands. But you have four of each. So it's di- you're never quite sure what the person's sure. going to do till they do it. And b- basically, these cards either you find a condition and you play it and it triggers an effect, yeah. or they just allow you to move tokens, add tokens, subtract tokens. It's a token manipulation. And then there's a few of the cards um, that you play during the, this phase that can give special tokens that allow you to swap places with your okay. stuff. So there's a lot of little subtle okay. things you can do. Once the hero and command phase is over, you flip all the cards up around the outside and you resolve the board. And as you resolve the board, let's say I figured out that I'd won this one, you have you put a victory token down mm-hmm. because one of the things we did that it was we really enjoyed was we created a bunch of secret objectives. Okay. So everybody has eight. You pick two mm-hmm. at the beginning of the game before you play. Right. And they have varying power they have varying victory point totals. Mm-hmm. Um, they're very simple. They're just a black card with some text. But the harder it is, the more it's worth, but the harder it is to achieve. And so this one is uh, capture three of the four center cards mm-hmm. from the battlefield. Well, so if I had played and got this, and you'd got this one, you'd I would have met the condition. Sure. But if we, if you had somehow pulled this off, this card's worthless to me now. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we do two, and you're only allowed to score one. Okay. And they're almost like a built-in tiebreaker in a lot of ways because they're sure. very, they're different amounts, and they're they're not. And that easy also is going to help you in manipulating the board as you're doing your build out because you're like I'm going to try to do the right. best to win my conditions because I, I want to get this extra four or five points. Exactly. And that's and was why we said we, we, a lot of people really love Force of Arms. They're like I wish it was a little more sophisticated. We win. Gotcha. Just wait. Yeah, we got we got We got it coming. <laughs> so yeah, that's where we're at now. And yeah, and so it, it's got a lot of dynamic and it, you know, it's a head-to-head game. Mm-hmm. And so some people don't like that because sure. it's just two players, but it plays less than 40 minutes. So mm-hmm. what we still did with both of these two games, Force Arms and this one, was, okay, we're waiting for everybody to show up to play Twilight Imperium. Let's quick put a quick game in. Well, you know this is quick. Right. You know it only plays for so long because it's got a finite function to it, sure. and then you just flip it and you're done. Mm-hmm. And so that's what people have really liked is Good. Force Arms is very filler. This is slightly more filling than mm. a, a filler game, right. but only because the strategy is deeper. And if you play two people play and they really focus on strategizing, it can take up to an hour because sure. you're really got to, you know, like, okay, if I get these three biroids in here mm-hmm. and I, I save the exchange token, I flip it over here at the last second, I get to trigger this card right. and this card and, you know, and people want they that want big yeah, payoff. Those yeah. Big payoffs. Yeah, absolutely. Now you mentioned already about the artwork, mm-hmm. the, all original artwork. Correct. Um, but one of the things this Robotech as an IP has a huge fandom. Right. Uh, you mentioned something before we <laughs> got on camera that you gave a little bit of fan service to the fans yes. uh, in the rule book. Not just the big the big reveal on the back, right. but there's other fan service so, here. So, yeah. One of the things was with, with some of the history of things that have happened with the Robotech IP, fans are a little, uh, I don't know. Mm, sure. That's why we did Force of Arms without Kickstarter. We just mm. did it, got it done, put it out there, and people really liked it. Mm-hmm. The the masters fan base, <laughs> they're they're very detailed, very rabid. We got a guy every time we post art, he goes, the character's fingers on trigger, the character's fingers on trigger. Then we have to go edit the finger off the trigger because he's he's military, mm. and this is the most realistic military of mm. all of them because there's no space. It's you know sure there's some hover stuff, but sure. it's it's ground army versus ground army, and so those fans are big fans of war games and stuff like that, and so they were very fussy about certain things, so we wanted to make the manual look the, look like a guide from being at school, mm-hmm. and so the main character, so we put little details on it where the character has scribbled her name on it. This is her helmet from the the show that everybody loves, and we, and we did things where she doodles in the margin in the rule book. Um, there's a spot in here where she says, you know, Oh, the 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 space guys suck. 
ATAC forever because mm-hmm. it's the ground based team. You know, and this is one of the most dynamic manuals we've done so far. It's really detailed. It's got all these little extras in it. And one of the things the fans did was there was things we added. There's bits of art in here that never existed before. Right. And it was the fans going, look, this is what it should look like, but the cartoon detail was so low, mm-hmm. it doesn't look right. And so right. I acted as a go-between between the fandom feeding me what they wanted, talking to Harmony, going, I want to do some things to really, you know, they feel like the redheaded stepchild because people love New Gen, people love Macross, and it's that 50-50 in the right. middle, so they feel almost persecuted by the rest of sure. the fandom. And so one of the things they told me was, hey, here's a screenshot. See this flag? And it's, I think it's in the screen like a, a second. Mm-hmm. In the whole show, it's like in a second. You're like, that's what the coat of arms for the Southern Cross Army is. This stuff people keep posting is wrong. Can you fix it? We did. So we got together. I had my artist create the flag from that image, and it was not a lot of detail. And it yeah. took us three weeks going back and forth with the art director at Harmony mm-hmm. to get it right. And he goes, I like that. And they, mm-hmm. the other companies who are using the IP, if they do anything with Masters and Army Southern Cross, this is now the f- official logo and emblem for Army of the Southern Cross. That's awesome. And actually, we ended up creating, um, working with Tommy at H- Harmony Gold, the Masters actually have their own logo now as well. Cool. So the flower of life kind of in a mm-hmm. metallic m- machine kind of way because right. they're all about clones. Right. And, and so the fans went nuts. They were very happy. Um, even actually on the board here, the Logan is the most pathetic looking mech you've ever seen. And they go, how did you guys make it cool? And we're like, we do good art. You do good art. <laughs> you do yeah, good you art. Do. <laughs> well, anything else coming out of uh, Solar Flare this year? Yeah. Um, so, so I'm going to let people know this. We actually put this up for pre-order. Right. So, as a tiny company, sure. I'm not a small company, I'm a tiny company, mm-hmm. um, this has already been paid for. It's in production. This is the production sample. The guy from China took it out of his suitcase and handed it to me yesterday. Yes. So it's being made. So some of that worry about, well, will I ever get it? Right. And what we did is we put it up for pre-order, and I, the link will be somewhere either posted or mm-hmm. in the video, mm-hmm. um, for $30, which is what it will cost in the mm-hmm. store, because I also very important to me to support retailers. Sure. So what we did was discounted shipping mm-hmm. so that it feels more like tax. You know, they're sure. only paying like what they would pay in tax. And then we added a couple of extra things. We created the Robotech playing cards. Which is cool. Which you can only get from the pre-order. Okay. And then we have a booster pack for Force of Arms, which is six extra cards that adds the Grand Cannon mm-hmm. to the first game. So okay. it plays, changes play. These will be available in distribution for free at some point, but you'd get right. it first. Okay. And then we actually worked with Titan Comics and the free comic book day that cook comic that's coming. Mm-hmm. We have a limited number that has um, the Myria art from Force of Arms right. as the cover. Right. So it, it's a variant. You can only get it from us. So what we wanted to do, because fans are... We, they're important to us and we really care about them but we also needed to generate some capital to once again since we always do art right start the art for invid invasion which is the one that's coming uh hopefully we're going to put it in stores in november nice and it's gonna it's gonna be a 24 by 36 board <laughs> it's huge and it's 224 cards wow and a, over a pound of cardboard not counting the board so that's awesome. one of the things we wanted was so when you play with the characters it it play in, in all of these games feel like you're there. That's what we got. and Invid is gonna be the most like that because you'll have five standees for your character and you've seen you, Jen. Mm-hmm. So you have Scott, and they have Scott on his motorcycle, okay. Scott in cyclone armored form, Scott in Guardian mo- mode, and Scott in, in battleoid mode. Okay. And so as you play the game, each of those modes has a different ability, mm-hmm. a different primary attack power, and a different uh, bonus power. And so you have to decide based on the conditions of fighting the Invid before the Regis comes with mm-hmm. Korg and Sarah to whoop you, how, wh- how, who's going to be in which mechs and how you're going to do it. And the whole time you're using mechs, it's generating protoculture stink, which is increasing the threat level, which is attracting mm-hmm. more Invid. And it's a one to six player full co-op. That sounds like it's yeah, going to be amazing. It's going to be awesome. We're, we're so excited about it. We, cool. we figured out the, bo- the box is going to weigh like 4.7 pounds. Ooh. And it's going to be $50 retail. That's good. Yeah. So yeah, this cool. backing this, even if you're not a huge Masters fan, this is, I don't say this about my games very often because I'm not the best rah-rah. I love my stuff. Sure. This is an incredible game from a, from a math balance. And I had two guys who are just math geniuses sit down and for two weeks, try to break it, and it, and it, they couldn't. Neither one could always win. There was no hole where it was. This mm-hmm. card should always be played first because since this, ch- they go. The fact that we don't use all eight unit cards every game mm-hmm. tweaks what's happening, and the outside cards aren't revealed till the end. Right. There's just enough. It was. Right. It's very give well, and there's take. A, well, there's a lot of um, like press your luck slash uh, like um, bluffing. 
Yes. Which is going to affect. I, and I, and I, and that's I not this, math. I'm horrible at this. Mm. I, I'm the worst. I won yesterday against a guy I was playing. Mm. I've never won. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I designed a really cool game, and my friends really helped me refine it. They're the experts. They played it. Mm. They're super strategy guys. And I'm just like, eh. Right. You know, but then when I play, it only takes 30 minutes. When they play, it takes 50 minutes. That's right. why we put 30 to 50 on the box. Perfect. But it's, it's, I don't know. I'm such a fan of Robotech, and I'm really proud of how it, it services the IP while being a game that was built for the IP, if right. that makes any that sense. Makes, yeah. And and Invid Invasion will be that final expression. And when, <laughs> the way we figured it out at the end, if you own all three games, you spend 100 bucks. And you could sit down and play the whole TV show. You could turn it on and then play the show in one night by playing all three games. And one little extra thing we're going to do, when Invid Invasion comes out, and we're going to put it up on pre-order just like we did for this to, mm-hmm. to keep driving what we're doing because if we renew the license next year, we have a deck builder we're going to make. Perfect. And we're going to do a booster pack that we have figured out a way to put Force of Arms here and, and Crisis Point here. Mm-hmm. And you could, you could have four people play, mm-hmm. but you play... Yeah. Ground, ground, space, space, and the two games will interact with each other. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's super cool. All right. So where does where do people go if they want to find out more about Solar Floor Games? Uh, SolarFloorGames.com and uh, Facebook.com slash SolarFloorGames. And at Twitter, it's a little weird. It's at Brave Frontier. Perfect. All right, everybody. Make sure you go and check out all the Solar Floor Games platforms to find out all the news and all the good stuff coming out of your uh, brain. Up <laughs> and... Uh, also, make sure if you haven't followed Game Trade Media that you please do that. Uh, we, we'd love to have you following us and fo- seeing all the cool stuff that we got coming out of Gamma and all the other cool shows we go to. So go to your friendly local game store. And if you are there, maybe I will see you. Thank you. Yeah.